Hello. This time we're going to let Zend Framework assist us in authenticating our users. For that, we're going to use a set of classes coming from Zend Auth. Uh, a few notes on that uh, is that Zend Auth only provides for the mechanisms of authentication. Uh, it does not do any kind of uh, privilege permissions. Uh, for that, uh, we're going to switch over to Zend access control list. Uh, but for now, we still need to get the authentication mechanism going before uh, Zend ACL will have any use for us. Uh, another note on Zend Auth is that it provides for a number of authentication mechanisms, um, all of which are very well outlined in the Zend Framework manual. Namely, they are database uh, stored in some kind of database. Uh, the Jest authentication, which is a more secure version of HTTP authentication, uh, LDAP authentication, and OpenID. Uh, for this example, we're going to stick with a more or less standard and simple database authentication where the user details are stored in a database table. Uh, which are actually created here already ahead of time called users and it has ID of course uh, then a username, password and its role. Uh, the username speaks for itself uh, while a password would normally be some kind of encrypted uh, string. Um, just to make the example simpler I did a, a clear text one but usually you would store it as either some kind of hash or md5 sum. Uh, and the role column is going to be used later when we uh, switch off to um, access control list where we don't only authenticate but also decide what the user can or cannot do. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to create another controller that we're going to use to do our authentications for us. And I'll just call it authentication. So every time um, we need to authenticate someone uh, we're going to refer to this control um, and of course I'm going to create an action for it for login in and login out. So this controller authentication is going to be responsible for any login or logout requests. Okay, let's just be sure that it created them. Okay, our authentication controller and um, our login and logout. And let's browse to it straight away. Okay, for now we're looking at the index action, so switching over to login action. Okay. Now, uh, Zend Auth is slightly confusing is that uh, there are two uh, ways you use them and you have to know when to use each of those ways. Uh, first, you have a Zend Auth adapter and then you have Zend Auth instance. The adapter is the part that is responsible for passing the information in and out of your uh, authentication storage, in our case the database. And then there is the auth instance uh, that does the actual authentication and uh, any storage. Um, what I mean by storage will come in, in a bit later. So well, first up we're going to have to create an adapter uh, that is going to be responsible for passing information between the Zend Auth instance and our backend database. Now I could put the adapter, sorry, yeah, the adapter uh, declaration right here in a login action, but then there's too much things going on at once um, in the same method. So I will create another method, private one, so that only authentication controller can use it. And I'm 
going to call it get auth adapter because that's what it's going to do it's going to help us get um, the adapter and privately yeah, I'm just going to call it auth adapter and we are going to create a new object made from Zend auth adapter db table uh, so db table that's the class that connects Zend auth and um, some kind of uh, <laughs> database table now how does it know how to connect to a database table well from the previous tutorial if you remember we created these resources that Zend application helped us to distribute across the entire application and here it is available to help us again uh, to get to those resources we are going to use uh, an instance of Zend DB table get default adapter so what's happening is that Zend auth adapter for a database needs to know exactly how to connect to the database and it gets that information from our resource that was defined earlier uh, now we need to tell it um, the layout of our table we need to tell it where to find the username information uh, and where to find a password because that's what Zend auth uh, looks for um, oh yeah and of course the table name So first here we're setting a table name, it's users, come on Aptana, uh, set identity column, identity column is the column in your table that uh, stores the username in our case it's just username and set credential column is the column um, that would typically be the password or if you go beyond the regular database authentication is the um, whatever verifies that the user entered is a legitimate one uh, most often it's the password and then just for the record uh, I mentioned earlier you would normally have uh, some kind of encryption going on here so uh, it's not clear text so it's more secure and if you have that you would use um, a method called uh, credential treatment uh, so in there you would put whether it's an MD5 or some kind of hash so that uh, Zen auth knows how to decrypt it and make use of it uh, so that's uh, it about setting up the adapter and now we just return that variable so we can use this method in the rest of our controller